Hey guys, it's Danny here. There's a new update for Photoshop with tons of improvements. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on what's new in the October 2018 release of Photoshop CC. If you look in the toolbar, you're going to see something different. This is the new frame tool. The frame tool lets you put placeholders. Let's say you're designing an app interface, but you don't have an image for it yet. You know that the image should be this certain width and height. You can use the frame tool to draw a placeholder. And if you have an image for it, you can just drop it in. Your image will confine to a frame, so you don't have to waste time creating layer masks. There's a new dedicated workspace for content aware filling. This workspace makes it easier to remove objects. You get a before and after preview, so you don't have to keep undoing and redoing like you did before. There's also a lot of settings to fine tune your results. Okay, this is really stupid, but one of the improvements that Adobe has made for Photoshop is their undo hotkey. Um, I'm just glad that Adobe did this, but here's what it is. Now, by default, the undo hotkey, that's Control Z on Windows, Command Z on Mac, it works like every other software. This means that if you press the Control Z key three times, it will actually undo three times. Whereas before, it would undo, redo, because it's undoing the undo, and then undo again. So in the end, you if you press Control Z three times, you're really only undoing once. To redo in a new update, you just press Shift Control Z or Shift Command Z on Max. Now, if you don't like this, you're not used to it, and you want to change it back, you can do so by going to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. Check mark the Use Legacy Undo Shortcuts option and Photoshop will be back to how it was before. The next time you use the brush tool, look in the options bar. You'll find a new butterfly icon. This is a really cool new feature called Symmetry Mode. I'm going to click on it and you can see that there are 10 styles for you to choose from. I'm going to choose a mandala and set the segments to 5. As you paint, your brush will be repeated on all five sides. There's also a lot of new smaller improvements that I'm going to go through very quickly for you. First, you can now hover over the blending modes in the layers panel to preview how it looks. You can enter math formulas, simple math formulas, into every field. You can preview how your image looks flipped without actually changing any of your layers. In the color panel, there's a new color wheel that you can access from the panel menu. You can distribute the spacing between objects like in Adobe Illustrator. The Type tool places sample Lauren Ipsum text so you can see your font and font size right away. When transforming a layer, you don't need to hold the Shift key anymore. It keeps it proportional by default. The Match Font feature now supports Japanese fonts. There's also support for 5 more South Asian languages. Finally, there's a new option in the preferences to scale your UI according to your font size. So if you set your font to something larger, your UI will also get larger. Hey, thanks for watching. 
If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. Now with this update, we're not seeing a lot of huge changes in terms of new features, but we are seeing a lot of small little improvements that improve Photoshop overall. And I'm kind of glad that Adobe chose this route instead of doing something that sounds good from a marketing perspective. I kind of like the frame tool. Um, I used it for a bit. It's not quite there, but it is a step in the right direction. And I do see it being used in future product mockups or Photoshop templates. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.